Thank you very much, Octavian, and thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. I'm going to try to see if I can share some material. All right. Welcome, everyone. Great to be here to spend some time on a very important topic for, for us and for everyone and for society, financial health. Um, so, just before we start, just to make sure that you know how ING looks into innovation, because that's going to be the linking pin to the examples I'm going to give in a second. Uh, so, it's just 30 seconds on, on how ING and how we innovate with fintechs. So, basically, we look to interact with fintechs in four different ways. One, by creating our own fintechs, and that's happening in the ING Labs, which I am heading uh, globally. So just a few examples of, of, of some of the startups that we have created our, uh, ourselves. Um, obviously, we don't have the monopoly of good ideas and, and, and great companies, so that's why we do partner with a lot of fintechs out there. We have about 200 partnerships today globally, uh, so partnership for us is very, very important. And when we feel that we should go beyond, we also invest uh, in those uh, fintechs, taking minority ownership via our ING Ventures Fund. Uh, we have 300 million euro fund to take minority um, shareholdership in the most promising fintechs out there. Most of them we like to combine with commercial uh, partnership as well. And sometimes uh, we go further and we acquire a fintech when it makes sense, uh, but it's just uh, you know, an added basis for a very specific purpose. So partnership with fintechs is very important to us. We are looking for a win-win-win situation where it's a win for our clients, first and foremost, a win obviously for our partners, and also a win for, for ING. So that's really an important channel for growth and for acceleration and good time to market for us. Now, focusing now on financial health. So what do we mean by financial health within ING? So we look into those five topics, which for us constitutes you know, the whole financial health um, domain. So it's about maximizing the, the income. Obviously, it's about having smart spending, having smart savings, understand how to best borrow in order to not to put yourself in the bad debt situation, obviously, but only to make sure that you get to the next phase of your life. And, and planning for that is very important in financial planning. So all those topics together is what we look into when we deep dive into financial health. And you know, why is it important? What's the purpose of all of it for us is to empower people and business to stay ahead in life and business. And that is exactly the purpose of ING. So that's why for us, financial health is so important. It's fully embedded into our purpose as a company. As I just mentioned, why is it so important and why is it really part of our purpose? For two main reasons. As I just mentioned, we want to empower people and businesses to be living their lives and their business as they want. So giving them the tool to, do, to execute on their plans. But also very important to us as a, as a financial service company is to earn and to keep the trust of our clients, uh, our stakeholders and society at large. Um, so if we don't provide you know, uh, proactively uh, strong advice and tooling on financial health, who are you and why should people trust you? Right? So for us, it's about, also about making sure that we keep on uh, getting the trust that we earned and we keep on earning back and back again. So if you look into the financial health industry, we do see three very big trends. And I'm going to spend some time in each of those trends and giving you very concrete examples on how we look into it and how ING actively acts on it. The first one and probably the biggest one, uh, also the biggest trend in the media is what you could say money management, or what we prefer to say proactive money management. Um, and I think it's, a, it's, it's mostly where also the neo banks have been entering the market. Um, and you know, as ING, we like to believe that we also are a neo bank within the incumbent. So that's for us very, very important. I will come back to that in a second. Second, uh, very big trend is that no financial services company has the monopoly of the best product. So if you want to provide the best, let's say, customer experience at the best financial health proposition to your clients, you have to be able to provide the best product at all times, which might and will include the necessity to provide partners offering in your platform, in your channel. 
to always provide the best fitting offer for all your users and clients. And last but not least, it's also making sure that you provide added value services daily, uh, having a daily communication to your clients and users, uh, and making sure that those daily engagements always provide the best financial health experience. I will give a few examples on how we look into this, but for us, it's very important to go what we call beyond banking, to expand the core of the banking business, providing that daily strong engagement around financial health. So digging into each of those three major trends, starting with money management. So within ING, what we have done um, ahead of the PSD2 that I'm sure you're all aware and open banking regulation, and let's say the open banking trend is to say, okay, we can do two things. We can wait and just be defensively compliant, or we can see how we can transform that, let's say, trend and regulation into an opportunity to even better serve our customers. And that's how, that's why we started YOLT uh, as the first actually uh, in 2017, really surfing the wave of open making and PSD2. We started off in the UK because it's a retail country where ING retail was not present. It started off in ING Lab, so as one of our own, let's say, startup fintech, starting really on the aggregation and PSD2 account. And that's okay. Once you aggregate the data, what type of insight can you provide and what type of value proposition can you provide on top of those insights with as sole focus to provide financial health to our users? So a bit more than three years after the launch, today's more than 1.6 million users uh, on the Yield platform. We're live in the UK, but also in France and Italy, but mostly in the UK. And we just launched a couple of weeks ago what we called Yield 2.0, uh, who basically, uh, on top of, let's say, the aggregation and the insight, focusing also on daily payments, having the yield card and the yield jar, making sure that we really serve our users around financial health. So what does that mean? It means that on the basis of aggregating all your accounts and having categorization of all your transactions, we provide insights, but more importantly, we help our users by gamification, by strongly advice, making sure that they spend the right way, that they save as they spend, that they always get the best saving proposition with the right interest rate and the best of the market at all times. Um, and on top of that, giving them growth opportunity for to grow their money. So it's really about insights, savings, growing opportunity. And we do that with partnerships. So if you see on the right hand side, uh, we have a lot of partnership that makes a lot of sense for our users to use, depending on what is their, let's say their focus. So, for instance, if the focus is saving, we have a partnership with Raising to make sure that they always get the best saving product out there with the highest interest rate. If the focus is about retirement and pension, we go uh, and we partner with Wealthify and Pension B to make sure that they get always the best product, etc., uh, etc. Et Home life for, uh, for insurance, for instance. Uh, money supermarket when it comes to switching your um, utility energy contracts. So there are a whole range of uh, vertical agreement and points that we have with the best fintech out there to make sure that we provide the best financial health experience for our users. So please watch out that space as we intend to um, accelerate the yield rollout and adding even more interesting financial health features to the app. But the financial health, we think, is not only for individuals and retail users. It's also about the other segments, namely SMEs, you know, uh, medium enterprise, and also corporates. So for that, we also have started in Angel Lab a company called Cobase that we span out. And Cobase is really focusing on providing the best financial health experience for mid-corps and large corporates. And why did we do that? Because we started off with the idea that if you are a mid corp or large corporate, there is a high chance that you have multiple banking relationships. So before Cobase, you had to go to each and every portal of each and every of your banking relationship to look for your account. Uh, and then if you are the treasurer of, 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 of the corporate, you know, you have to have your Excel sheet on the side and, st and start to combine all your, you know, asset that you have in all your different banking relationships. And then also if you want to do uh, cash flow optimization, if you want to start 
having hedging of your uh, interest rate exposure, it becomes complicated. So this is why we say, okay, there is clearly a huge pain to solve here to provide a unified financial health experience for our business clients and business users. So what Coves basically does is, on one hand, making sure that we aggregate all the accounts that a corporate has in all their different banks, and, and on the other hand, also aggregating, aggregating all the ERP and internal data of the corporates to make sure that you have one place where you have all the information across all your banks, which allows you um, to have a single centralized cash flow optimization if you're a treasurer, starting FX optimization, starting cash flow forecast on the basis of a single aggregated view. Uh, and we see a huge traction for this uh, offering. Uh, we span out. More than 20 large corporate clients are now involved. We just finalized a series of funds of 10 million euro. But more importantly, or next to it, some of the large FIs in the market, namely Calericol and Nordia, joined this round. Uh, and we also are signing, or Corbez, I should say, is signing uh, distribution agreement with those large FIs for them to be able to resell Corbez to their corporate clients or to provide and or to provide let's say, core-based as a wet label solutions. So as ING, we do not, uh, we think the best source of success of core is to be independent of ING, um, to make sure that we can really attract as much, as many FIs as possible to distribute the core -based proposition to the, to the corporate world. So very exciting about this. And it's really about providing the best financial health experience for large businesses and new corps. Another example on... Uh, on that first trend of money management is really about around subscription management. So we see a huge trend to look into, uh, well, first of all, the trend whereby transactions move more and more into subscription transactions. So we did a study in Europe um, and we found out that on average in Western Europe, a person has about 11 subscriptions at all times. It's massive. And it's also complicated to know and to follow. <laughs> and, and some of them, if not most of them, are double. But we don't even know about it because we just there are just too many and there are some kind of hidden in our daily banking experience, right? So what we were looking for, and we found a great partner with Mina Technology, a Swedish fintech, is to say, okay, can we not, first of all, make sure that our users and clients can identify how many transactions they have, and then it would be fantastic if they have double if we have double, let's say, subscription, or we want to cancel subscription, is just to say, to be able to cancel those on one click. And that's exactly what Mina is doing. It's a great customer experience whereby, first of all, you see a list of all the subscriptions that we have, and then one click on a button, and it's done. You don't have to call any desk or to ask again to cancel, and again and again, the center later has for return. It's just one click away, and the rest is fully automated on the background. And next to that, what you will see that a lot of those providers of, you know, are providing, let's say, weekly or regular, um, let's say, opportunities to uh, to come into a, an offer, a special offer when it comes to subscription, right? So join Netflix because this month, you know, it's going to be two euro less expensive for instance, or compared to HBO and these kind of things. In this case, what we uh, want to provide our customers, the opportunity to easily switch into a better offering. So that, that's exactly what MINA allows us to do uh, as well. And what we really like about this partnership, and that's for us very important, because there are several companies in that space, is that what we want to do with MINA is to go global. So we start in Brussels, in, in Belgium. This is where we have validated uh, the offering, but we also have validated because that this offering can be expanded to other countries. And that's what the technology allows us to do. And that's what we love about MENA is the, the automation that it provides and the fact that we can, in a matter of months, enter a new country. So we do have a, we are now discussing the global rollout of the MENA proposition uh, across different ING countries. So very interesting to see. And what you see as well in this space is that it starts with managing subscription, but then there are even more use cases now appearing around subscription. So you see actors coming in trying to disrupt uh, by providing an aggregation of subscription on top, even, the, in the likes of Apple, right? So it's okay, why, why can't we just do an all-in-one buffet uh, instead of having the subscription? So that's more disruption coming from the top that we are 
very closely uh, watching, but also going further into subscription, in sharing subscription, for instance. So it's a very interesting space and fully part of financial health. The second very important trend that we see is what some people call the alternative yes, or what we also like to call always the best fitting offer. Because indeed, if you truly want to empower your customers, you have to provide them with always the best offering, even if this is an offering com coming from one of your competitors. Uh, and that's definitely something that we as NG are very you know, uh, cautious about. So we, we, on one hand, we want to have the best NG platform and the best NG product always, but we also are realistic and pragmatic, and we understand that sometimes uh, our partners slash competitor can have a better offering for a specific type of client or for a very specific moment in time. And we should be able to be open, recognize that, and provide that offering throughout, throughout our channels. So what we have done, for instance, in that space is that we have partnered with a UK fintech called Funding Options, and we brought this partnership to the Netherlands, whereby, and it's around the segment of SME, so let's say small and medium enterprise, uh, on, in the lending space. So when an SME comes to ING channel to ask for a loan, uh, obviously we, we, we love to be able to provide an ING loan, and we do obviously, but sometimes it doesn't fit our risk appetite. Um, in this case, what we do, we partner with funding options that provide a, a list of alternative uh, credit providers that, that, bet, that better fits the risk appetite of the requester. In this case, we are happy to redirect to another uh, loan provider that we give the loan to the requester. So that's the alternative, yes. And we are doing that in the Netherlands. We also do that in Germany in partnership with a fintech called FinCompare. And we are very happy about this because in the end, what is important to us is happy customer. If we don't do that, they will go elsewhere. We have no interest in that. We want to make sure that they always go back to the energy channel because they know that they will, bet, they will get the best product regardless where the product is coming from. And last example in this is not an ING, uh, let's say it's, it's a partnership we have in Spain with a company called Fintonic. We don't, it's, 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 it's an investment partnership. So what we, we are a minority investor, a large one in Fintonic, uh, which basically uh, provides a financial health experience, a bit a la yield, but focusing specifically on credit or more specifically on credit. So what Fintonic has developed is a proprietary amazing credit scoring that really, that is widely recognized in the market as being very, very, um, let's say, precise, leveraging alternative data next to the classic PSD2 data. Um, and on the basis of the credit scoring, you know, they also open the floor to a long list of alternative um, credit offering that, uh, that, 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 that is to make sure that the user that goes to Fintonic always get the best fitting offer. Uh, and we very much like the model. Uh, that's why we have invested uh, quite significantly in, the, in this company. And the last um, trend which I would like to talk about is the daily engagement in the financial health space. And for that, I will give you two examples. One, which you know, I think is very fitting because uh, it's a great idea that started actually in Romania, within ING Romania, uh, that we call DOIs, uh, which is, a, say, a supercharge of the existing bazaar uh, offering that you may know. Uh, and what it does is really providing a great, um, let's say, cashback shopping experience for basically everyone. Um, and yes, there are many companies doing this today, but you know, we feel that we have developed an in-house uh, specific proprietary AI that allows you to be extremely personalized, both for the merchant side, as well as, as for the users, the retail users, to make sure that the user gets the best feeding experience at all times when it comes to shopping with the best offering, the best discount, the best cash black cashback. That's for the retail side, but also for the merchants to make sure that there is an increase in engagement at all times. So very happy about where we are. We, on one hand, we, uh, because it's very important to, to obviously have a large set of merchants to be on board in this program. And we're happy to have on board more than thousand partners in Europe that we're happy to join this program with more than 200 in Romania only. And you can see the names, you know, those are a mix of very big brands, but also very pleased to see important local uh, merchants that are also happy to join the platform. And uh, the results are amazing, where we see, you know, more than 100% more than of higher purchase frequency since we launched that program. So 
very happy about that. We uh, we have launched our live in Romania, but also we are now looking to roll it out very quickly, or as quickly as possible across all, let's say, European energy locations. You can check it out, the B2C app called DealWise in your favorite store, uh, but you also get uh, the experience in the ING app. And the second example is an initiative that we started in our lab in Amsterdam, which is around mobility. It's called Invisible Ticket, and what it does is, is basically uh, providing you an amazing traveling experience where instead of going to your you know, metro bus uh, train, where you have to buy ticket every time and specify you know, where you want to go from A to B, we say, well, with PSD2, with the rollout of the, the smartphones, with the consent, let's say, of our users and travelers, we should be able to be able to know where you are at each, you know, where you are at, at any given time. And if we're able to know where you are at, based on your consent at any given time, we should be able to recognize if you are on a train, where are you, which station, on a bus, you get in, you get out, and automatically, um, we charge the best fitting fare automatically using PSD2 APIs. Uh, and that is a huge added value for many stakeholders for, oh, first of all, the travelers. It's an amazing experience. You don't you need to buy a ticket anymore. You just go, basically. You're, you know, you're in and you're out. Um, but also for the PTOs, for the transporters, it's, you know, it's completely hardware free. So no need to have those doors where you have to pass by. No need to have your cards. Uh, to check in and check out, you just go. Um, and on top of that, it's an amazing data experience because uh, for our transporters, they are able to know, you know, uh, and for merchants where people are so that they can also push the best offering at any time. So it's really an interesting play, really around financial health because you always get to pay the exact price and the exact fare, uh, which is exactly fitting the journey that you have experienced actually. So for that, we also live in a few countries with proof of concepts, uh, because technically it's a, it's a huge challenge, it's very interesting, uh, but we are very close to be commercial. 2021 will definitely be the year where we want to be commercial in multiple countries, and we are very active on the Romanian market with our local transporters and local governments. So uh, watch out this space, uh, it might come your way in 2021. So you could say, okay, uh, What's next? Uh, you know, those three trends, that's great. Uh, and there are many things will happening and will happen in, you know, in 2021. But what are the next waves? What can we expect? At, at ING, what we think is that, uh, based on the example I just mentioned, uh, you know, financial health is very, very important to basically keep that trust, which basically is the most important asset for any financial service company. If you lose that trust, what, you know, people will not come to your shop, and you have nothing left. So financial health for the, to keep that trust is so important that we think that, and today we are discussing financial health as a specific topic, but we think it's going to be mainstream. It has to become the new normal for any financial services to who basically uh, share the view that we have that it's about client first, right? It's not about the bank first. It's about first the clients. And if, you, if it's client first, you have to provide uh, the best financial health experience that you can. Uh, otherwise, people might lose that trust. Um, so if, you know, we, we really believe that that should not become a focus anymore because that should become mainstream and a new normal. And that's what we can expect, um, that as a customer and as a user, you will see that proactively all financial services should make sure that you earn as much as you can, that you save as much as you can, that when you lend money, you lend the exact amount of money for the right purpose to help you further and that is something instead of what you know other financial institutions might uh, look to maximize their own profit. What we are looking to is to maximize the profit of our users because we believe that if we do that, uh, we will get you know they will they will give, share the trust with us and we will be successful together. Another trend that we see, uh, and we are just starting uh, this trend, is that on the back of PSD2, we strongly believe, and there is a lot of lobbying in that space that actually we should go beyond. And it's about data sharing. But if it's about data sharing, it's about not only the financial data, but also in general, it's about personal data, you know, all together sharing. And how can we make sure that individuals and companies are 
back in control of their own data. And that's a very important topic because today you could argue that some of the large companies and big tech companies are obviously monetizing this data with our consent and sometimes without us knowing uh, largely. Um, and we strongly believe that the power should bring it back, should be brought back to the user. And it's up to the user to know exactly which data he or she wants to share, to whom, for which reason, for which reason. Uh, and we really believe that it's also fully part of financial health. Uh, and we expect strong development in that space in the years to come. And we start to see now, and we are part of you know, several of those conversations with government, with different stakeholders, but also with user group, because we really believe that's the next step for financial health in that space. So with that, I hope that I gave you a, a few interesting pointers and trends and examples uh, within ING or without, you know, outside of ING uh, to give you a food for thoughts. Thank you very much for, for listening.